right, it's time for the Jockstrap Sports MMA Podcast. As you guys heard, this is the Jockstrap Sports MMA Podcast special, and it is it is a special podcast this time. It's a UFC, oh gosh, 235, I think. Wow, I really should know this. Yeah, 235. But uh, it's special because there's two titles on the line. John Jones and Tyron Woodley are both putting their titles on the line. So... I'll just go over the docket really quick. We're going to go over the fight picks because I don't like to back end that stuff like a lot of other people. I would rather just give you the main fight picks, who I'm picking and all that, uh, the breakdowns, uh, the the meat first, and then keep listening if you want, and we'll go over the whole card. Then we'll go over the last card, show where our shortcomings came because <laughs> there's a lot, uh, and where uh, where I might have broke down and, uh, <laughs> and uh, worked on something uh, during the it'll get to it uh you'll have to that's that's a tease for uh for when we talk about the ufc on espn three espn plus three i think uh santos versus uh blackowitz jan blackowitz anyway so uh I, this is justin at off underscore pod and that's adam at i don't know your handle twitter handle is at jockstrap sports no at sports jockstrap that's right instagram at jockstrap underscore sports check us out fantastic yeah absolutely check us out uh so once again uh we're just gonna go over this uh ufc 235 it's in uh the fight capital of the world las vegas t-mobile arena we've seen this up close the t-mobile arena it's a spectacular thing i love it it is um i I haven't gone inside yet we just kind of you know driven around it's the one that the uh the black knights play for right golden knights golden yep. knights i believe so okay. i believe golden knights play okay there. yeah yeah then yes i've seen yeah. that one up close yep it's pretty yep, amazing up close yeah i i've yet to see a ufc there oh man i'm going on a tangent but i like seeing ufc on tv better uh unless if you have really good tickets true uh okay so we're gonna get to the headline it's a uh, lightweight light heavyweight uh john jones versus anthony smith so this, my pick is not going to divert from a lot of other people's picks, but Smith has been fighting since 2008. Lately, he's been a beast of a striker. He's pretty big, and uh, he used to fight a middleweight, but now he's light heavyweight. And John Jones is John Jones. Um, I don't really think he's been in trouble since, uh, oh man, what's his, the Swedish guy, uh, Guftason or uh, the Belfort Armbar. I say Jones has got to win this. I see a stoppage in round two or three. Um, it's probably going to be by knockout, like TKO knockout, something like that. I would really love to see Anthony Smith win. Um, he doesn't really have the best record, but he's really on a surge, and he is a vet. So that kind of gives him a little bit of help in this, I think it would. He moved up weight class. It would be nice to see that kind of happen. Um, this has got to be an insane line. I mean, John Jones has people like minus a lot. What's your guess? Minus eleven hundred. Ooh, close, closer than I thought you were going to be. Minus eight fifty. Oh wow! I, I feel like I was kind of off. You know, stuff. There's always a puncher's chance, so it's always worth a dollar on the underdog <laughs> on these. Um, not at, not after the whooping that, we took last week. <laughs> um and then welterweight <laughs> Ty- tyron woodley versus Kira- uh i know how to say his name kamaro uzman i just had a brain fart there for a second so i was really going back and forth on this one uh until i started thinking about uzman's previous fights uzman can come out and he can look like a powerful striker and he's a heck of a wrestler he does have this tendency though to just push people and like hold them against the cage and kind of grind the rounds out and get decisions the fight that i'm really remembering is against emil meek and usman did not look really impressive in that he kind of just held him against the the cage didn't really engage in any striking and he basically did the same thing with damien maya Woodley is a super strong wrestler, and he can knock people's heads off. Um, That's what we want to see. Yeah, Woodley is totally going to stuff his takedowns. Woodley, I don't think, is going to get pre- pushed against the fence like like he is. And uh, honestly, if he goes into uh, trying to push him against the fence, I think Woodley would strike him and hit his head and knock him out. I I got Woodley inside distance. I think Woodley's going to knock him out. I think it's going to be a vicious knockout, too. All right. 
you know, at minus 185, you know, it's not a not a terrible bet with a confidence pick. Um, yeah. Usman I, I think wouldn't win you a whole lot anyways, you know, plus 150. But right. like you said earlier, it never hurts to throw a buck down. Yeah, I think I think that's a really good bet. I I after thinking about it, like uh, going back and forth, just because Usman looks really good and he has some striking, some uh, fights where he he showed his striking and everything, but then thinking about when he actually goes against tough strikers and wrestlers, he does this tendency of holding people against the cage. I I see Woodley being able to beat him inside distance. All right. Uh, this next one, welterweight Robbie Lawler, who is a previous champion against Ben Askren, who is a, a previous champion from one, and I believe I don't know if he was champion in Bellator either. This is Askren's first UFC fight. He's dominated the other promotions. He's never lost. Uh, he has a. So I was looking at his record. The two notable wins that I see that it, he had are against Layman Good and Douglas Lima. Douglas, but that that wasn't since uh, 2012. Douglas Lima is legit. Layman Good recently got beat up. Uh, I believe he got choked out. Um, we called it on one of the fights. I forgot who choked him out. Uh, and anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, Lawler uh, lost to Woodley and Dos Anjos, but he beat Cowboy Cerrone. Um, I don't know. Uh, I never really count Lawler out just because he's he's a beast and he's been fighting for a long time and he's a vet and he's fought top co- better competition than Askren's fought but i kind of think Askren will stay perfect and i think he'll just wrestle Lawler so i got Askren um decision in this one all right you're uh going with the heavy favorite at uh at min- yeah, minus yeah. 285 i don't know if you've seen the the lines yet but uh um no, not really. Uh, I, I did log into Bovada, the place you're, you're looking at the lines, and uh, kind of I, I didn't I didn't really look at them. Um, I think I saw a couple. Uh, that's why like the John Jones. No, I didn't see the John Jones one. Obviously, otherwise I would got it. It's true. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I tried not to look at them. I was just doing it to look at my bets that we're gonna go over next. Alrighty. Um, women's strawweight Tisha Torres versus uh, Hang. Uh, Willie Hang. Uh, Torres has fought some really tough competition. She's one and two in the last three. She beat Watterson, who is good, and she's been good lately. She lost to uh, Adranje and uh, Joanna Young Uh Torres is fighting off ATT. That's a really good camp. Um, the two people that she lost to are not people to, they're not slouches. They're not people to be ashamed of losing to. Hang, this is her third uh, UFC fight. She hasn't fought the competition that Torres has fought. But she's really good. I mean, she looks really good. Uh, she has a win over Danielle Ta- Taylor and Aguilar. Um, she's 18-1. and one. I'm going to say I, th- I think Hang wins this one by a decision. Going with a minus 130 uh, for Zhang, Hang, however you say it. Yeah, I, I, I don't know um, really how to say it. But yeah, minus 130. I, I, was kinda... I mean, Tisha Torres would have been even money. So I don't think it's a too bad a risk or i guess you know you're not losing a whole lot even if you no you're, you're not getting up a lot of yeah. juice uh for for that one um this next one okay all right i i just uh i was trying to see i, I thought i didn't put my pick in there but i did so it's cody garbrandt against pedro monjos munoz uh so it's great to see Cody fight again. He has two losses against TJ Dillashaw. Um, he's fighting on a team alpha male. Uh, his last two losses were, I believe, his last two fights too. Uh, Pedro is seventeen and three. He beat uh, Justin Scoggins, Rob Font, uh, Caraway. He fights out of Black House, which is the same as Anderson Silva, or at least uh, traditionally it was Anderson Silva used to fight out of there. I am. I, I. I just have to go with Cody. I, I would say inside distance too, and I think it's going to be a fast one. And he's probably a pretty strong favorite, if I would have to guess. Pretty strong, you know, not as strong as uh, the John John one, but yeah, you know, minus one seventy isn't isn't too bad. Uh, oh, that's not yeah, that bad. Pedro Munoz would have come in yeah. at, a, at a plus one forty, but I think so far we've taken all favorites. Yeah, but, but they're not. They're not bad favorites. No, no. I mean, if if it's if it's 
you know, minus 200 and down, and especially if you're confident about it, I think it's a good, good bet. Yeah, honestly. we got three of those. The John Jones one. I don't even know why I'm putting up a dollar. I, I <laughs> you're not gonna get anything yeah. for it. I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, the next one would probably like, be the Ben Askren at minus 285. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of pricey for Askren, yeah. especially since he hasn't really fought competition like Lawler. Yeah, but well, let's yeah. see where we finish out. Uh, what's what's up next? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so it's a this is the prelim a headliner on ESPN. It's a featherweight fight. Jeremy Stevens against Zabit Mago Saporov. <laughs> uh, Zabit, I'm just going to refer to him as. Uh, Stevens has been fighting forever. He was almost on his out- way out in the UFC until he had like this three fight uh, win streak. I think it was like last year and or the year before or something like that. And the main guy was there's a streaking Josh Emmett who actually just got a, a fight now. Um, I forgot who they... they uh, I shouldn't even be bringing it up because I forgot who he got his fight, uh, who was booked at a fight. But um, either way, so then he lost the Aldo for uh, body strikes. Zabit is on a tear. He's 16-1. and one. He has a lot of hype behind him. I think, honestly, I think Stevens is a great matchup for Zabit. I, I think that this is, a, this is a matchup that the UFC is doing intentionally to showcase Zabit. Zabit does these crazy, like, kicks, and he does these crazy, like, uh, just strikes. And he would be a fantastic counter striker to uh, Stevens' style, where Stevens kind of bull rushes people and throws haymakers. So I could totally see Stevens throwing some haymakers as a beat, doing like a front kick or something and knocking him out, or at least knocking him down and then getting a TKO. I, I, Zabit's going to win by TKO or KO, and he's probably a pretty, pretty high favorite too. He's a, he is a pretty high, pretty high favorite. Um, you know, you talking about these these interesting kicks and stuff. Makes me really want to watch this, but this is a paper. This yeah, is a pay yeah, per view dude. event, right? Y- yeah, but this that that's the head a headliner for uh, the prelim oh. card, which is on ESPN. There we go. Sorry, I was taking it. I was taking a sip of tea. Uh, <laughs> I thought thought I had a little bit of time, but he's done uh, kicks like uh, Anthony Pettis, where uh, he jumps off the the side of the cage and then kicks like they are like crazy kicks. That's what would get me and to tune in. Yeah, it, you know I say all this stuff, and especially because of what a good matchup it's going to be, they're just going to wrestle. You know, it's going to be a decision. He's going to wrestle his way to a decision. Don't jinx it. Knock but, on wood. No, I know, but but what really game plan traditionally, if they fight traditionally the way that they do, Zabit's going to knock them out. Um, what was the line at? You said he was a heavy favorite. Heavy but, favorite, you know, minus two fifty. Oh, okay. It's not as bad as I thought. Well, I mean, it's still like not, not great, not great. But we'll take what we can get. All right. So this light heavyweight, uh, Misha Serkinov against Johnny Walker. Man, Misha Serkinov is one of my favorite fighters. I I feel like he was going to have a title shot at one point in time until uh, Volkan Ozdemir and Glover Teixeira. Uh, he is very well rounded, great strikes, uh, great grappling, great great submissions. <laughs> I tried to talk myself in spoiler. I tried to talk myself into picking Misha Serkinov. I just couldn't. Um, Johnny Walker's a beast. He, uh, I was just writing. He must have like three times the testosterone as a normal male. Just the way, just how beastly this guy is. He's got amazing strikes. He's a weird guy too. He's quirky, but uh, he's a beast. Uh, and then he showcased, showcased showcased his wrestling defense lately, and it's really good. So, um, he's going to get a little bit of daylight from Misha Serganov, and he's going to probably knock him out. This is going to be uh, Johnny Walker's toughest competition. We just talked about this guy. Do you remember yeah. this? Oh, this yeah. is like he, he's, he's stepping in because his last few fights, he took no damage whatsoever. He just knocked people out, walked out of the ring, walked out of the cage, and was like, I just want to fight again. And yeah. it was a great bet for us last time, and it's going to be a great bet for yep. us this time. Yeah, 